All right, New Smyrna Speedway, how are we doing tonight? Man, you guys are louder than the crowd yesterday. I appreciate that. All right, let me ask. I like to ask this as we get deeper into the World Series. Who's been here for one night already? A couple of you. Anybody been here? Is this night six for anybody up there? I appreciate that. There's a couple of you. Man, it's, it's tough even as a fan to make it for six nights. Think about these drivers, these crews, these employees that have all been here. We still got three nights. So I really appreciate your support. Appreciate everybody's support behind us in the pits, everybody in the office, the concession stands, everybody that's helping out making this event possible. It does take a lot to make these races happen, especially nine nights in a row. Uh, I appreciate you, Annette Tech, with the announcer. They're tired of hearing me at this point already. So we'll go ahead and get things started. I'm going to ask everybody to please rise and remove your hats. For our invocation, followed by our national anthems, we have Todd from Racing with Jesus Ministries to, prevent, to present our invocation. Todd? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these great nights of racing. We thank you for all that you bless us with. And Lord, we thank you for the men and women that give us the freedom to be able to be here tonight to enjoy this great sport. Lord, I ask that you would just put, put your hand of protection upon this racetrack tonight, Lord, that you would guide and lead the competitors, the teams, the officials, and each and every one of us, that you would all keep us all safe, bring us home safely tonight, and give us a great rest of the week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Todd. And for the singing of the Canadian National Anthem, followed by the Star Spangled Banner, we welcome Annette Bouchard. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love and of us command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. Stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud? we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the Sting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave or oh, the land? that's been helping us out with the national anthems this week. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll hear you again. Are you guys ready to go racing? We do have some breaking news here at New Smyrna Speedway. We've been monitoring the weather for Saturday night for the Orange Blossom 100. It has been declared we are going to run the Orange Blossom 100 tomorrow night here at New Smyrna Speedway, Thursday night. We are canceling the rest of the Saturday night program at this point. We are canceling the Saturday night program. The Orange Blossom 100 will be right here tomorrow night, 
Tell your family, tell your friends. Ryan's just finding out about this as I'm talking to you. It'll be on our social medias, but we wanted to get the information to you. They're expecting over an inch of rain on Saturday. There's no way we can get it in if that happens, if that happens. We're trying to be preemptive for these racers because they've come a long way to put a great show on for you. Folks, give these racers a huge hand. They spent a ton of money to be here, and they have not disappointed. Thank you for being here at the beautiful new Samarna Speedway. Not only has the car count been very good and stable, it's been some really good racing. There's been a couple of incidents. You're going to get that over the course of you know nine days of racing, but all in all, it's been very competitive. The 26th. The 29, the double zero, the big three, the class of the field. We'll see if that story continues here tonight. First of 35 laps set to go as the field one was out of turn before the green flag. The fly were sideways.
first pro late model out of here last year. So here we go. They turn it on, American Auto Pace Car. Pulling off the speedway. Field bunches up. Control car is the black double zero on the outside. Into the start zone. in victory lane, but I can guarantee you that is not how she was looking to get there this week. Tony is okay down there. And yeah, she wall up the wall pretty squarely there on the driver's side, so the damage isn't going to be so much about cosmetic. It'll be about whether there's any suspension damage and that one machine had been having a great week. will go up on the hook. A, ten, a 13th to start the week, then two 10th finishes, and a 7th for Tony Bright. I hate to see that. She was inside the top 10 looking for another great run. She's greatly improved here this year. So tough break for Tony Bridger. We'll get her up on the hook. And they did complete a lap. So now it'll be a two-lap shootout. And positions have shuffled just a little bit as Katie Hedger is able to get by the 26 of Dawson Sutton. Can he do it on the inside of Jimmy Renfrew, who's been the dominant car throughout this event? The lights are down on the Daytona Auto, Daytona Dodge American Auto Pace Car. I'm excited for this one. Here we go. Two to go. Just one mile of racing left. Jimmy Renfrew getting ready to climb out of this thing. Let's hear it one more time for your winner, Jimmy Renfrew Jr., second one of the week. <laughs> Looks like they got things dialed back in here. Perhaps, maybe, maybe not. I'm, I'm telling you, the sound gremlins are out here this week at New Smyrna, both on the TV side of things and on the uh, announcer side of things here in the track PA. So unfortunately, they were not able to get to work. We'll sneak in here and grab a word with Jimmy Renfrew. Jimmy. Congratulations on another big win. Got some battle scars on the front of this thing, and you did that. That's fine, right? Compared to what it, it could be, I'm sure you did not want to see that yellow flag with three laps to go. But you did a whale of a job holding everybody off. I'm sure that was exciting. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I'm not even sure where that came from, but we'll worry about that later because we're in victory lane. So I uh, just can't thank all my guys enough. It's been a tough couple days since we won the first one, and. Uh, Kind of didn't have some bad luck, and apparently half of 35 is 20. So the other night we raced to the rain two laps after the you know halfway, and I lost it one lap after that. So that's all right. We'll try to stay in it and uh, see what we can do. Well, it probably feels a lot better to win one this way, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm glad we can make the car better. We can hold those guys off. Those two are both fast. Um, but... We made some wholesale swings at this thing, and I can't thank all my guys, everybody at Donnie Wilson Motorsports. Um, I couldn't do it without all of them, and just happy to be here. Jimmy, congratulations on another great victory here at New Smyrna. Thank you. Jimmy Renfrew Jr. gets it done for the second time this week. He closes up the point battle. It's going to come right down to the wire between the 26, the double zero, and the 29. You're going to want to be here for the next couple of nights to see how this championship battle shakes up. we got a tie in the Florida Modifieds going into tonight. We'll go ahead and shake that down here when we get back up to the tower. Jags. Get exclusive discounts when you shop jags.cbvideo.org. Take your garage to the next level and support the channel with your buys at jags.cbvideo.org. 
So with a, a shorter fuel, that means they're going to play nice. They're going to race this out. It's going to be dramatic. And we're going to see what's going to happen. Here we go. Daytona Dodge American Auto Pace Car off the speedway. Green flag in the air. Daytona Dodge American Auto Pace Car off the speedway. Green flag in the air. the middle of the racetrack and up the track is Jared Allison towards the back. No harm, no foul. We're good. And it is LJ Graham away with the lead. Watch him see the William Parker in cover one. Trying to make his presence felt. He slips up in the middle and trying to line the outside. To the Did a good job not to wreck it, really. So two tributes tonight during the Blue Memorial, which is a staple of the Wednesday night program here during the World Series. That uh, 76 tour, lap tour mod race will come up at the end of the night. And the green flag is coming back out. there for the 72. We'll watch Wayne Parker get back into contention here in the one. They will get loose today, but loose is fast. 72, LJ Graham looking for the number two. Gary Simon, way down on the apron of the racetrack, shoots up. Timmy Moore could kind of see that move coming and wash up the track with him. Give Gary Simon's room to eight touch wheels. LJ Graham still leading. Moore goes up the racetrack. And Simons comes to the other side. Coming to the right. A lot of sparks and a Timmy Moore 57. Keep the low air pressure there. It's going to build up. Trying to get these cars as low as possible to get out of the air. LJ Graham back down. Jerry Simons in the 66 reel of in. Thank you. 
of the series. And tonight, looking dominant out there as he stretches his lead out over the 66 of Jerry Simon. Neither is 
Simons. Two down. Going at it for a second. Making for a good little race here. Can't look at the outside and narrows up. And he swings wide. And he's going to roll the top side of the middle here. Wayne Parker with a heck of a move going into one and two. And Simons keeps him up the racetrack. And he's going to hold on to the spot for this battle for second. Let's hear for the race winner, LJ Graham in car number 72. LJ, let me ask you, do you feel a little bit better about this one? I mean, you flat dominated this one and nobody fell out of the race. So you got to feel a little bit better about win number two, right? Yeah, for sure. I know uh, Jerry and Wayne have a bunch of laps here. So for them to fall out for the first one, I mean, I still want to take credit for it because I still had to do my stuff to finish. But having them on the racetrack and racing with them, I've they watched Jerry race with my dad years ago. So uh means a lot to me. Um, I always wanted to come over here, and now I've got two wins this week. So if nothing else good happens, it's been a pretty good week for me. So uh, go on to tomorrow night's 75 lapper. And it could be even better for you, too. I mean, you could win the 75 lapper, win the championship. You're up by uh, about six points, perhaps, now on, on Timmy Moore. He finished back and forth. So you guys were tied coming in, and now you've got the two wins, so he can't beat you in the tiebreaker. So I think the ball is in your court for that as well. So it's going to probably end up being a pretty good week for you one way or another. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, it's racing, so uh, it can damn sure humble you at any second. Anything can happen out here. Do you have anybody you'd like to thank? Uh, all the people on these cars, uh, Jimmy Coke Race Engines, Boyd's Fabrication, TRM, SD Brands, Mavericks, Earthscapes, Lily Air Condition, Feeney Shocks, Jernigan & Sons, C&D Crushing, l l Fire Protection, and uh, I think I got them all, but uh, thanks all the fans for coming out tonight also. LJ, congratulations on win number two of the week. LJ Graham wins our Ford Modified feature. We're going to head up top, get ready for the 602 Triple Crown Finale. 66 laps of action from them. Get ahead. Go to patreon.com slash speedway video now. The field is set and ready. We'll throw the green for the 602 modifying finale as they'll come off to number four with Paul Hartwig Jr. back in the 73 car tonight. Yeah, let's see what's going to happen this time. That's it. Red flag is out immediately. A huge crash. One car up and on its side momentarily flying through the air as that wall acted as a ramp to launch that machine. Red flag is out. Safety will head out. And the 602 Modifieds have a big one for the third race in a row. That was massive. And we're 
hopeful that everybody's okay now. That was a serious incident, and now our attention turns to the safety of the drivers off of turn number two. Just a reminder, I see a lot of activity headed towards the exit of the pit road. Please clear the exit and nobody is to enter the racetrack except official personnel, please. Nobody else onto the racetrack. Please keep the opening of the pit area open for emergency vehicles that may need to come in. Nobody else onto the racetrack except official personnel, please. So again, a major incident, one car is a black machine. I'm not sure exactly who it was through all of that chaos. One car launched off the wall. You can see the tire marks. So good news from turn number two from the accident scene. All drivers are okay. The drivers are okay. Appreciate the applause there for the drivers. That was a scary, scary crash right at the front of the field. I'm sure there'll be great uh, replays of that. And if we see one, then we're gonna get one now from Flow Racing. So we'll take a closer look at this. Lorraine, the 74, tried to get a run on Paul Hartwig and the Baldwin machine got him. And it was the 33 at G. John Tommaso who hit the wall hard. Eric Lane hit the wall hard. Your point leader, your point leader, Eric Lane, is involved. So Baldwin, Dijon, Tommaso got the worst of it. Max Hanley's involved as well. At the 74, Jonathan Loray in the second spot. He kind of came down on the 77. And we'll see, as we see the pictures again, you will see good replays of this online, I can tell you that much. If you have Flow Racing, you can tune in now. And the 33 of Carson G. John Tommaso clipped the wheel, went flying, and then hit the wall and somehow didn't go all the way over. But a massive crash. The so red flag is out here early in this 602 mod feature. Lap zero of 66 complete, and the field is about halved. So you're going to take a moment to clean this up. So give you another opportunity, grab another drink without missing anything. Grab something good to eat. If you're getting a little bit chilly, we do have the World Series hoodies available in the souvenir stand. You get your souvenir program. Maybe you want to flip through that to pass the time. I'm sure everybody's on their phone trying to buy Flow Racing right now, looking for the replay of that incident because that was uh, that was a wild one. And the battle scars are left on the wall over there in turn number four. So terrible way to start hate to see that these cars and these drivers man they're really good drivers it just they just can't get away from one another and when the accident happens at the front of the field it just leads to that chaos so eric lane we'll have to just kind of take a look through the field once everybody gets rolling it's hard to tell from our vantage point, other than uh, Paul Hartwig and Lee Sharpson, who started at the back of the field, uh, he made it through. Eric Hershey, James Blewett, Nick Bear made it through. Uh, and then everybody else kind of stopped over here behind the trailers in turn number two. So we'll have to look at what's left of the field. But Eric Lane, I saw him come in on the hook. So our championship leader in big, big trouble. Carson G. John Tommaso are out of it. I don't see the 49 of Max Hanley. So Bobby Jones and perhaps Jack Baldwin with a shot to win the championship here. We're going to have to do some calculations to see how everything plays out today. But Bobby Jones, in the nick of time, rejoins the field in championship contention at the back. And the inside lane goes. The outside lane got caught sleeping. Stack together, just have to do it. So that is Luke Baldwin, the seven, not Jack. So Jack's going to be out of the championship running. Bobby Jones may have just made a championship running move by coming back to the speedway. Are we going to start this time? So again, no start. And I have 
apologize to my buddy Ben Dodge up here. He put his race last. And he's over here like, come on. Eric Lane, the two-point lead over Dijon Tommaso. His defenses are gone. Bobby Jones, six points back. He's in the 12. So watch the 12 and the 24 with damage come through the field. Those are your championship hopefuls. Let's see what happens next.
car that's gone around in turn one and two. That is the Adam LeCicero, number 27. So right at the halfway point, LeCicero spins it around. All right, folks, getting set for a restart with 33 laps to go. Your leader up on the outside, Jack Baldwin, is number seven. Another big one. And Matthew Green's Florida Modified going back up the back straightaway just got an eye for that calamity. Cooper got a little bit loose. Oh, Hartway got into the 12, and then Hartway came down on the Lee Sharpstein 17. That was the other car that went mowing the grass down the back straightaway. So Lee Sharpstein, the third car involved. Bobby Jones able to roll, but he's got trouble. Sparks underneath the left rear of that machine. Heavy damage to the left front. Hartwig was able to make it to the pits. Something to think about, time limit. One hour was the time limit on this race. We're closing in on that. And that could be bad news for Eric Lane. He's gonna need all the laps, I feel like, to get back up into that top four. See Eric Lane, he went to the outside to back him up the spot. It feels like the outside momentum is where he wants to be. So let's see how this plays out. 33 laps left. tried to break it up and got involved. Hi folks, I'm being told from race control as the time limit has reached. Next flag is gonna end this race. So I just wanna make it clear what that means. When we go back green, the time is expired on the, on the time limit. If they go 33 laps, clean and green, they'll finish it off. If there is another yellow flag in between now and lap 66, this race is effectively over. So next flag, whether it be checkers or yellow, we'll end this race. 33 laps in, halfway home. So technically, halfway. It is an official race, anywho. But time limit reached. It's unfortunate that it's come to that yet again, but them's the rules that the drivers that are here agreed to. Justin Beecher, hey, he's unhooked and he's moving. But next flag will end this race. David Rogers, super late models to follow and then the Blue Memorial 76 still to come. So again, it could be 33 laps or, I mean, it could be off the, at the drop of the green as they're coming off turn number four. Next flag ends this race. Jack Baldwin in car number five, looking for that win, looking to steal the championship, fifth in the points, entering tonight, trying to leave the champ. Here we go, already pushing and shoving into the restart box. They are stacked to top one another. Well, 
checkered flag and a fly on this one. Ladies and gentlemen, Jack Baldwin in car number seven will win the race and just like his brother one year ago, will take home the Triple Crown Championship for the 602 Modifieds. Jack Baldwin, your winner and champion as he heads to victory lane. Make some noise for him, Jack Baldwin. We're a winner. Jack Baldwin wins. Incorporated 602 modified title and we'll head down, talk to our winner and champion in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner and champion hopping out of the car, let him hear it. And they are gonna put the helmet on. Hey, it fits. The hat didn't fit Bubba yesterday, but it fits perfectly. It's like they sized it. They used his head as the, the mold. That's that's what it was. Celebrating with the family, special moments down here. Jack, come on over here real quick. Man, what a drive for you today. What a what a special night to pick up your first career 602 win here at New Smyrna, and you come all the way back and win the championship. What an awesome experience for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, sir. It was a great time. And this win uh, in the Memorial Race has to mean a lot. You're a modified racing family, so you know how much the Blewett family means to modified racing. What's it mean to you to win this one? The Blewetts are like family to us. Uh, pretty much half this car was given to us by the Blewetts, whether we wrecked it or they just gave it to us. At Luke's balling their, was balling their motor. The Blewetts are like family to us. So, so to win a, an event in their family's name means so much more to me than any other race possibly ever could. Well, you picked a good one to win, and to come out the champion, I mean, that's just got to make it all the more special. After your brother won it last year and you won it this year, I would say the Baldwin family's got to cover for the Modifieds for a long time to come. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, thank you. We appreciate you guys being here. Congratulations on the championship. Do me a favor, reach in and draw a winning 50-50 ticket. And I'll ask you one more question. Do you have anybody you'd like to thank? Uh, I'd like to thank Mohawk Northeast and Al Hankey, uh, Baldwin Automotive, my dad, JRI Shocks, Pro Fabrication, uh, Dixon, Blewett, Dennis, Tony, Mike, Scott, Stevie, Beers, my spotter, my mom, pretty much everyone that comes and helps out. Ladies and gentlemen, it's here for your champion, Jack Baldwin, in car number seven, New York. All right, we do have our winning 50-50 ticket. He was so excited, he was gonna keep the ticket, so. I had to wrestle out away from our champion. Go to patreon.com slash speedway video now. They start to thin out just a little bit, and then a couple more all in for the Orange Blossom, which of course has been moved up to tomorrow. So some drivers might have to make quick turnaround plans. Some might not be able to make it. Hey, that's the way she goes. It'll be a good feel. It'll be a good race nonetheless. The other option was to take our chances and maybe not have it. Green flag set the flag.
gets it done for the second time during this year's World Series. Well, congratulations, man. It's been a great World Series for you. You pick up a second victory. Tomorrow is going to be the finale in that 100 lapper, and uh, you're tied with your teammate Brent Cruz for the point lead. You've got the advantage because you've got wins. He doesn't. Congratulations, and uh, way to set yourself up nicely for tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, it means a lot to me, to me and this whole 22 crew. They work so hard all week, and uh, we've just been doing whatever it takes to get these wins, and uh, we're going to go win the championship and the race tomorrow. I like the confidence. How tough is a week like this, especially with all the big races and things getting changed around? Yeah, it's tough for sure. Um, you know, six, five nights of racing, um, getting out of the track late every night, 12, 1 o'clock, and having to get up every morning at 8. is It's tiring. Everybody's definitely a little run down, but we're still digging. Uh, definitely give a shout out to all the fans who stayed. That's a long, modified race. You guys are diehards. Absolutely right. Anybody you need to thank tonight? Yeah, I want to thank First Auto Group, everybody at Toyota Racing. Everybody at Wilson Motorsports, and I'd like to dedicate this win to uh, my helmet painter, Brian Young, who uh, just unfortunately recently passed away from uh, cancer. Gio, congratulations on win number two of the week. Go celebrate and go win that championship tomorrow. Giovanni Ruggiero wins the race. May he be your champion tomorrow. We'll find out. We are going to head topside, and we're going to step to topside now to Ben Dodge for our Tormod Louis Memorial 76. Go to patreon.com slash speedway video now. Vultures, dogs, and lions, and they're about to be unleashed. Spotters are high atop Broadcast Central, and to bring you the start of tonight's John Belewitt III, here joining me at Broadcast Central is Matt Diller. Folks, we're ready to go. Trail blood breaking into turn number three. These are the drivers that live by the grace of God in 600 horsepower. Folks, it's the modified.
26 machine. Heartbreak for the driver from Howell, New Jersey. Certainly is, and we said before, you know, one thing that Jimmy wants is to respectfully pay tribute to his brother and his family. So this is a very special event. It's not just any race. It's a race named in honor of who Jimmy looked up to as a brother, as a family member, and perhaps to Jimmy, more important, as a race. Well, if you look at the paint scheme on that number 76, people that are new to modified racing might not realize how special that paint scheme is. But growing up on Long Island or going to places like New Jersey, John Blewett, not the third, but John Blewett Jr. made that red, white, and blue 76 so famous with that beautiful gremlin uh, and then that Cavalier and uh, the Blewett family. What a racing lineage uh, heartbreak, though, for, for Jimmy. You know the story. You look back at these competitors. Today, the race cars are considered to be store-bought. They all pretty much look the same. The bodies are the same. In an imaginary form, to give you a picture in your mind, it's like a little kill building a bottle. You can make it look like somebody's, but it wasn't designed necessarily to do anything other than the way that it came out of the box. But in the old days, the Lewitts, Charlie J, Richie Evans, Jeff Bonine, they had cars that were of their own, we'll call it flavor. And that flavor built the foundation of modified racing. It built the foundation of my life, too, to be honest with you, Ben. Uh, and places like this, of course, we talk about the great places that Modifieds are so renowned for in the Northeast, but every February, we would come right here, and all of us, to the Smyrna Speedway, uh, back in the day to Volusia, but to see NASCAR's uh, tour-type Modified Racing. And I remember sitting over there and seeing Charlie Brzombek in the Rosebud 5 and, and seeing Richie Evans and then the late models that you know, read about. Wild machine, yes. And then Junior moonlighted also racing in the modifieds because man, we love cool race cars and nothing cooler. That's right. And then there was Mark Melvin with yes. a car that looked like it was the body was falling off. It was moved so far to one side. You know that booth over there. I want to tell you a story. I announced in that booth. That booth really? used to be on this side of the racetrack, on the old grandstand that the Hurricanes took out from. So I, there's a lot of history around that booth. And uh, I'm very glad to see that they kept it on the infield and perhaps trying everything to get back out. Here's Matt, we're ready to go back to green. Anthony Bello shows the outside. We'll see if he can make that momentum work to his bottom side.
Russian flag comes out. At first, it was moving. He goes and returns. The passengers can go down the street right That might be the story here. And we're going to find out right here. 57 laps on the board. We start pending.
I got to turn this mic over, but I just want to say this. It is a, there has been a pleasure working with you, Matt. I respect you and I admire you. And we all know that I'm fighting health issues and everything else. And uh, this was a very special moment that I won't forget for some time. The pleasure is mine, and I've always loved you because you care about modified racing. So we pay our uh, attention down to the front stretch right now because this driver just moved into fourth. All-time wins at the World Series of Asphalt Stock Car Racing, and he's going to get that beautiful helmet that's on his roof. Ladies and gentlemen, there's your winner, Matt Hirschman, celebrating for the first time during this year's World Series. Just when you thought maybe they had caught him, he's back. Matt, congratulations on winning this event yet again. You know, when you don't win for a couple nights in a row with how dominant you've been out here, people start to chatter. And uh, you silenced them all. I mean, you've been running great as you always have, but you silenced everybody today, taking home another little memorial. How does it feel to win this again? Yeah, it's good to be back in victory lane. Uh, you know, we, we did. We got off to a very slow start. Uh, you know, we just... Um, you know, we beat ourselves on a few things. Uh, we just, uh, we just weren't. We prepared and we worked hard, but uh, we didn't execute. And uh, you know, with that started already on Saturday and just continued for a few days. And um, you know, we uh, it took till tonight to get back on track. Uh, you know, this has always been a, a good race for me. Uh, the way it plays out, uh, you know, was able to make steady progress, roll forward right from the start, and uh, just be, kind of be in good position all race long and eventually uh, make that drive and make that move, uh, you know, second, first, and, uh, and get out front. Uh, so uh, really, uh, you know, tonight's performance, a lot like we've had in the years past, uh, you know, the previous three nights to this, uh, not at all. So not up to standards. Uh, so, uh, but like I said, not for lack of effort. The crew's been doing, uh, doing a great job, a lot of hard work, uh, you know, going in, goes into this to get here and then while you're here. And, uh, you know, it's good to, like I said, we, we, we've had our heads hanging for, uh, for half a week, and uh, now we can at least uh, leave tonight with our heads up high. Well, I think last year you set the bar so high by basically sweeping the week. I think everybody went home and did their homework, so they caught up to you a little bit, but this team never gives up. And it's always this point of the week where you guys really turn up the wick with these bigger races with the, the Blewett and, of course, the Evans. How's your outlook for Friday? I mean, yeah, it should be good. I mean, we'll uh, hopefully, like I said, we're a little sm a smoother sailing here for uh, for the next two nights. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, you know, we when it used to be just Monday to Friday, like I said, usually first night or two, maybe, you know, it took to get, you know, for Wednesday to Friday on. Um, but like I said, the you know, with a big race to start the week on Saturday, you want to obviously get off to a good start with a, you know, a good performance there. And, and we did not have that. Um, but uh, like I said, we're uh, not for lack of effort and we'll, uh, we'll see if we can get any more this week. We got a lot of people down here supporting you. Who would you like to thank? I'd like to, like I said, thank the whole team, uh, our sponsors on board, uh, Florida Connection Racing, uh, MikeSellsGolfCarts.com, and uh, Collier Trucking, in addition, like I said, to the PD Motorsports uh, entire team from top to bottom, uh, home to at the track. Uh, everybody did a great job. Matt, congratulations again. We'll let you celebrate. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear from Matt Hirschman, your race winner in the Blue Memorial. You know, our goal is to give the customer what they want, when they want it, at the price they want to pay, and then follow it up with just the absolute best customer service. You can find the same part at 100 different places, but if you find it for less, we're gonna match it, and we're gonna guarantee it. We're gonna ship the product same day. We are all about the customer, period. And when you have a question, the associate you're talking to, he's got a car in his garage that he's working on. So when you're talking to Jags, you're talking right to the shop.